hanging on the That's the vegetable patch. Get the lettuce once, you see? Get the lettuce. Do you see any wheat? You see only moss. Charles dinner or lunch? So the good old reliable Uchikikuri, some of them damaged by the birds it seems. But the best place for them is to grow them over the compost heap. This is Charles Doding's uh, vegetable garden in Homemakers Alhampton. This Alhampton is a little bit of a strange name. Why Al? Hampton, is it Arabic or something? Phoenicians were in this area in the past. It's Lebanese. Great color, they say. You see the solar panels on top of the building? That's such a small land and uh, they can make a food crop. And yet they have some space for what? Oh, look at these beans. Yellow climbing beans. Just because of the color. Beautiful color combinations with these charts. Can you find a single wheat here? This is an apple tree. And that's a... What's that apple? All kind of... Chicories, oh yeah. And French dwarf beans. And leeks as first and only crop. These are harvested. All the courgettes. This one is mulched because there are some weeds yet which are growing there through them. And dives. This is a new area, it has mulched all the winter squashes 
and this is a bed of the Jerusalem artichoke. Apple is not doing bad. Moving an apple. That's a polytunnel full of tomato. Let's go have a look. Mmm, the smell of basil. Mm. I think the polytunnel is just a little bit bigger than ours. Probably one and a half meter. And most of the tomatoes are harvested. I see one single large black Russian one. And those ones are the ones that we saw in the Italy. Uh -huh. I have a video about it. Some peppers. And a good mulch. That's what we have done also. Without a tomato and uh, aubergine in a pot on a compost heap with some squash into squash. No, they look like melons. The melons he told you are not going to be well this year. In every space is just aubergine. Mm. I think my polytunnel is much better. Really, really good with my own hands. And basil. And some other oh bell pepper. It's really prolific. And some of that cape gooseberry. And lots of basil. You should do a basil patch like this. The idea is that half of the polytunnel is vegetables and herbs. Sure. You don't do just all polytunnel taken by tomato. This is a new bed that I made for the BBC. I cut and screwed the size on the day before, just resting on the ground, okay, and topped it with compost. And then planted this for BBC. I see radishes, I see pak choy, I see this uh, mustard, I see Philly mustard, some, I think this is broccoli, and some Philly mustard again, and then pak choy again, it's kind of oriental leaves. So that's what you will see in BBC. That is Charles Dowding's greenhouse. And you see more tomatoes here. And growing the seeds here. Seedlings. And they're getting ready for it. Oh, look at the aubergines. I like that. And again, in the greenhouse, we see a balance between the amount of the rows of tomato and herbs like basil. And one row also of origin. This is the tallest origins I've seen so far. It looks like a commercial. And at the end, you see some peppers.
and a big cucumber, but I don't think they are tasty. They look very tough. And here, triad bed, made in July, May 2015 for my online course, Yakun. Yakun is this kind of things from the Andes. Bukan Yakun. A little shed, and then we come to the cabbages mixed with some flowers. And those are, I think, also those Andean thingies. Oka, I think. That's oka. And then some uh, oriental leaves, then some. Uh, cherry, I think, and then a courgette in that corner, and seedlings for the next generation. These are some of them, I think, are turnip or oriental leaves. Turnip, they can be oriental leaves. But he don't plant in rows, he plants in plugs. So he will, he will not waste seeds. And a little bit of this hot plant. And a proper place for drying your onions. And some seeds growing here. This is also where Charles Odin keeps his... Uh, that's a conservatory, keeps his chikipuris there. The solar panel to provide some money for... ...in off-speed. And that's it shows himself very rare to be seen properly. Some carrots, some kale, those are the things are the parsley. I'll send you an email. Yeah. Okay. Hello Charles. How are you doing? Nice to see you Charles. Grabbing a picture. Ideal. £20,000 he earns, Charles Dowding, he says, uh, after paying for all the costs and tax and everything. And considering that you will also have your food and also you have your, after all this also, this is just from the land, the vegetables and everything. But considering that he also has courses and lectures and other things. So he, he, will, he will earn enough just to have a life. To enjoy life, you know, at the end of the day, the purpose is just doing what you like. He has done it in the in the Zimbabwe. He has done it in France, and now he is doing it. He has done it up to three years ago. He was uh, somewhere else. Then he came here and uh, settled here and just started again here. Okay. It's just been pasteurized and that is brilliant.
This is a cooking apple that he recommends. I have a one tree like this. Okay, this is a tree which stays here for many years and that's another one. The distance between them is about yeah, 180 to 2 meters, 180. And this one just probably lasts one season or one and a half season. So just using this space. And as you see here, there are parsnips. And they're using this space between them to grow some lovely pumpkins and winter squashes. Different kind of apples and again the winter squash. Oh look at this asparagus bird. Probably I should have asked Charles to talk over this. When I was talking with him, I should have filmed it. But Charles has had some videos explaining what he is doing. But uh, seeing the vegetables in first, in first hand, is not this gooseberry. Something else, look at this. And this giant onion, just lonely here. And a bed full of yeah, rhubarb and raspberries and onions between them. Using the space, that's my idea. Intensive gardening, horticulture. And here we are back. This stage is producing something. I experimented with many uh, pumpkins and I found Uchikikuri, Moscow, the province, and some other ones are really good to grow. These autumn raspberries are doing now. Get ready. A large size. Love this mass of the lush asparagus. What densities? He's taller than me. They're well established here. These Baloti beans, they're ahead of ours. Beautiful. And this is the back of the compost heaps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So whatever you invest in compost, practically is not wasted. The space is perfect. And this part of it can be used for drying the onions.
Second caterpillar in Charles Dolphin's garden. Well, if I yeah. Google it, because mm, just hawk moths is a brown version of that with like a spike, actual spike. Oh, the caterpillar that big is going to be big, isn't it? Because it's massive. Because if you think of something like a, I don't know, a red admiral. Size of a finger. Yeah, yeah, we were walking past. Do you want me to move my hand? That's all right. Whenever you want. Yes. Just what was the scale? Now we have the scale. Thank you very much. I'm really happy because you know I'm noticing a lot less insects this year. I'm interested to hear you saying that. Okay, dig and no dig methods he's talking about Charles Dowding. Okay, he says that there is not much difference practically in the harvest, the amount of the harvest, the weight of it each year. But uh, the effort you do in digging is the extra job that you impose on yourself, so why bother? That makes logic to me because I started like that actually. But then because I had to work and do other things, life commitments, I could not really keep on the wheat, top of the weeds. <laughs> so, anyway. Hmm. She looks really happy at what you're saying, and you look really demonstrating. Well, you have your baby now, huh? Baby pressed <laughs> apple juice. <laughs> oh, that's something spicy. I've got a few bones in there. They're not warm still. Organic yeah, matter. No, there are just uh, things from the apple. Mm -hmm. Your granddad, huh? Yes, she can Oh, he's growing some uh, tomatoes outside. Yeah. That's good actually to know that how they will survive. No sign of life. Inside the polyton, inside the greenhouse, and look at this aubergine. Really good size, and yet more continually coming. What he has done, he has kept it dry here, and then cutting the leaves and branches, which are under the footing terrace. So that's the first terrace here. So anything under it is cut because they're not producing anything. I did it once like that. And what happened was that I ended up with blight because water was seeping from here. That's all for the bucket. What's the compost toilet? Let us see how it looks inside. Oh, wood saw. Oh, so simple. And there is some, the other end. Should I lift the lead and see how it looks? Right, right, right. You just close the toilet, put the wood chip in, and then you just split out here and pump it. Three. You can have a conversation, three way conversation. Well, you three you toilets. So practically with this you don't need water. So you will have compost also. Here, yeah. Manure. Certainly can. Sorry. So you take it out from there? Huh? Yeah, that's the little toilet. Well, you take that's interesting. The compost toilet in Charles Dowding's home acres. Small holding. They don't keep any chicken here, so that's a good source of menu, human menu, also. So that is aerated here also, and also the fumes and gases and everything goes up like that, and back into the nature. Charles is home, a little bit long, some fruit trees. That looks uh, kids orange red. And a few flowers. And a few bags of compost. And that is the end of our visit to the homemakers where Charles Doding grows his vegetables.
on the 4th of the September 2016. Now heading back.